Guys, have you ever noticed that giraffes and horses are really similar? Yeah, they are. I've never noticed that before. I bet it has something to do with having a common ancestor, meaning they evolved from the same animal. But how do they turn out so different? I know Lamarck had a theory about evolution, inheritance of acquired characteristics. He said that, for example, if a wading bird continually went deeper and deeper in the water, and in doing so stretched his legs, they would eventually grow longer. They would continue to grow longer throughout his life, and when he produced offspring, he would pass his acquired characteristics onto the offspring. That's a remarkable idea. Get it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyways, why is he not known as the father of evolution, then? I thought that was Charles Darwin. Lamarck must have had a few flaws in his theory of evolution, or the change in species over time. Yeah, you can't pass on acquired charis- characteristics to your kids. Like, if I dyed my hair pink, my kids wouldn't have hair pink. So what is the correct theory for evolution? I think Darwin had two theories that are both correct. Descent with modification and descent by natural selection. So descent with modification is when offspring have mutations that better help them survive in their environment. Their offspring will inherit these helpful traits because mutations are part of the DNA sequence, which is what parents pass down to their kids. Darwin's other theory is modification by natural selection. This is like survival of the fittest. Organisms with more favorable traits will survive, and they will therefore pass their traits on to their offspring. Galapagos finches are a perfect example of natural selection. When a storm blew a group of finches off course and they landed on a new island, the main food source on this island was big nuts. Once in a while, a finch would be born with a mutation that caused a bigger beak. It would be more suited to its environment and therefore more likely to survive and pass this trait on to its offspring. Eventually, the group of finches on this island developed big beaks because these were more favorable for getting food. This is a cladogram. It is a kind of chart that shows common ancestors and how closely related organisms are. Another way that you can tell if animals are closely related is the amount of homologous structures or things in their bodies that look the same but are used for different purposes. For example, the bones in a human hand are very similar to the bones in a bat's wing. Yeah, that's sort of like analogous structures, or structures that do not look similar but used for the same purposes. An example of that would be something like a moth wing and an eagle's wing. But analogous structures do not show that species are related. Vestigial structures can also show relatedness. These are body structures that are no longer used. Yeah, did you know that pinky toes are vestigial structures in humans, and it's highly probable that we'll no longer have pinky toes in a couple hundred years. (laughs) What? But back to the main point. Going off of Darwin's theories of descent by modification and natural selection, how do you think horses and giraffes evolved from a common ancestor? 